All right, so welcome everyone. Welcome to this new series where I basically edit your pictures. So today I'm going to edit one of my pictures, but moving forward, I would like to edit your pictures. So if you want your pictures to be edited by me, make sure to send one of your pictures at the email address that I will leave in the description. And without further ado, let's move to the editing process on Capture One. All right, so today's picture that we are going to edit uh, is this particular picture right here which is a picture that I took when I went to Nagano. So what I want to do with this picture is to first, uh, well, adjust the exposure, the colors of this picture, but also take care of the distortion that you can see here. So to do so, I'm going to introduce you to a tool uh, in Capture One, and you're going to learn how to do that uh, with this picture. All right. So first thing first, uh, when I edit a picture, I like to um, first select a color profile. So what we're going to do here here, I like basically the Fujifilm Provia uh, color profile. So this is what I'm going to use as a base. And I invite you to, um, I mean, when you use Capture One for your Fujifilm pictures to select a color profile that takes you the closest to what you want to achieve. So I go with the Provia here, then I'm going to select a new adjustment layer and I want it to be filled because this is going to be, uh, this is going to contain my exposure adjustment. I'm going then to the exposure tab here and I'm going to adjust my exposure while keeping an eye on this histogram right here. So as you can see, if I go here, there is uh, too much picked highlight. If I go here, everything in the shadows is not going to work. So what we're going to do is that overall the exposure is good, but I want to adjust a little bit the, the highlights to be, um, I kind of want them to be slightly overexposed here because I want to show a bit of that mystery. So let's overexpose them slightly. Then when it comes to the shadow, I also want the shadow. I want to increase a little bit the shadow. So this is what I'm going to do here. I want to also decrease the clarity because I don't want um, I kind of want to give that blurry feeling that you have in the snow, right? Nothing is really clear. You have that that A's around. I'm going to dehaze a little bit, but not too much. And once I'm OK with this, usually what I do is that I will do final adjustment with the curves here. So I'm going to play with the curves to have the to fine tune basically my exposure the way I want. Increase a little bit the shadows here. To give that filming look. So here, uh, if I do this, I remove basically all the shadow in my in the snow. I don't want to do that because I still want to um, showcase that there are details in the snow, right? If I do this, I don't see much. So I'm just gonna go it down a little bit. And here, this is where basically this part of the exp of the image will uh, be blown out. So I'm gonna keep it that way. In terms of vignetting, I don't want it to have too much vignetting. So this is where I'm going to keep it. All right. So that's the basic exposure of my picture. Now we're going to move to the grade. So grading is basically to add some color uh, within the, the shadow, the midtone and the highlights of my picture. So I created a new empty layer, uh, a new fill layer. Sorry, by clicking here, new fill layer, and I named it grade. Now I'm going to my color tab and I'm going to the color balance uh, tab right here and I'm going to the shadow and I'm going to add, um, I think some orange within my shadows here. Not too much because I don't want it to be like completely orange within the mid tone. Let's add some, some slight amount of blue. What happened? Actually, I like the green also the green, um, increases a bit um, that that green within the um, within the tree. So I'm going to maybe play with the green here. Not too much because I don't want to have like too much green within my white. If I do this, right? So, OK, let's do this. And in the highlights, I don't think I want to touch too much the highlights. Honestly, I can have maybe a slight amount of blue. So this is without the grade and with the grade, without the grade and with the grade. So as you can see, the green becomes more, 
prominent and you actually have less kind of purple-ish feeling uh, within the picture. So now we're going to move to our colors. So we're going to create a new fill adjustment layer and rename it as colors. We're going to uh, the color editor. So for today, let's first play with the basic uh, color editor. So first we're going to play with the red here. I want it to be a bit more pop, a little bit more from the image. Right now I feel like it's not popping that much. So this is without the, the red adjustment with it. It pops a little bit more. I'm going to try to move the orange towards the red. Not too much because otherwise uh, the color in the tree right here, you know, if you increase too much, it's going to be a bit too much of colors. I don't want that. There's a little bit of yellow, um, which I'm going to move toward the orange also. Now, if we go to our green, um, I don't want to have too much uh, green color within that. And if I have green, I don't want it to like be too light. So I'm going to decrease a little bit the saturation of my green. And as you can see here, you have like a deep green uh, within uh, within the snows, which is what I want. I don't want to have too much emphasis on the green. I want uh, the emphasis to be on the red, the white and a little bit of green after. All right, so now let's look at the blue. So I don't want much blue in my, I don't want to decrease it completely because after it's too green. So I'm going to use the blue to balance a little bit of that. Yep. I like this balance uh, when it comes to purple. I don't want purple in my image too much, but I'm going to move it towards the blue also. And that's before that's after the colors. And if you want to see the before after of your image, you can click right here and you have a nice tool that shows you uh, your before after of your edit. So this is the before and this is the after the before and after and that's pretty much it for the colors all right so now i'm gonna show you how to create a local uh, some local adjustment right so we're gonna create a new empty adjustment layer and i'm going to call it subject simply because i want to make that subject right here pop a little bit more so the way i'm going to do that is that i'm going to create i'm going to select the magic brush here Press M to display my mask of my layer, select part of the subject. And as you can see here, Capture One automatically select this subject. This works uh, using the magic tool because there is a big contrast of color uh, and luminosity between my subject and its surrounding. So Capture One is um, capable of easily detect what is my subject here. So now that the mask is properly applied. I'm going to press M again so that I can see my adjustment. I'm going to my adjustment layer or my adjustment tab, sorry, and I'm going to increase a little bit the, the exposure. I want more contrast, um, more clarity on my um, subject and maybe a little bit of increase of the shadows. I'm going to increase a little bit more the exposure again more clarity and this is just for my subject to pop a little bit more because it was a bit dark i felt like so here's before and here is after it's really subtle but it's those subtle adjustment that can uh, help you really um, improve your picture all right so now uh, one would think that we are pretty much done right the picture looks i mean pretty good so if we look again at the before after this is before and this is after but what i want to do is i want to take care of this distortion right i don't want basically those trees to be um, crooked i want them to be straight so there is a tool to do this in capture one which is really useful which is uh, this particular cursor right now so what this does is that it allows you to select uh, the vertical keystone and Capture One will automatically apply changes to your picture to make sure that those verticals become actual verticals. So as an example here, if we want to make sure that this temple becomes fully vertical, because this was taken with a wide angle lens quite far away, so you have some distortions, right? So I'm gonna apply the keystone here. 
and Capture One will automatically uh, change my image to make sure that they become um, actual vertical. So let's let's see how it goes. So as you can see here, Capture One change my image and this is now the result. So you can see how powerful this tool is and you can actually do this not only with vertical but with horizontal or both at the same time. So this is really helpful if let's say you are taking a picture of something that's flat but you're a bit to the left or to the right uh, of that uh, particular subject and the distortion can be corrected in post-production. All right, so now that I look at my picture, I feel like it's a bit too green. So let's go in the grade. I added some um, green dubbing tone, so I'm going to decrease this, this amount of green. Okay, that's, that's fine. So as you can see here, this is the before, this is the after. So we adjusted the exposure, we adjusted the grade in our picture, we adjusted the colors, we applied local adjustment to a subject, and we also corrected um, the distortion in our image. Now, one last thing that you would want to do is to crop your image. So there are several form factors that you can select here for your image. Let's say that we want to export it for Instagram. Let's go to for four by five and here you have a four by five ratio that is automatically selected by capture one so you can apply that four by five ratio making sure that your subject is centered here and as you can see our image is pretty much pretty much ready so now we're going to export it so as i did the crop for instagram i'm gonna also export it for instagram so those are export recipes, which are, which are basically a set of settings that you can apply to the um, to your images whenever you want to export them. And those are present in uh, Capture One by default. So for example, this one, which is Instagram optimized, will uh, basically apply the settings, the export settings to your image for uh, Instagram as a platform. And Instagram recommends to have a width of 1080 pixels for your image. And with a crop factor of 4x5, Capture One will automatically um, basically calculate the amount of pixels that you need on your height to have a proper uh, export setting for Instagram. So what you can do is just select this JPEG Instagram optimized recipe that is present by default in Capture One. Click on export. And then once you go to your Capture One export folder, you will have here a capture folder where you can put all your pictures, a select folder where you can put basically the pictures that you selected and an output folder. The output folder is where your export will appear. Based on the recipe that you selected, you will have a subfolder, a subdirectory that will appear here. And if we click on Instagram, we will have our picture that appears. And that's pretty much it for today. So I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want your pictures to be edited, make sure to send them to the email that I will put in the description. See you in the next video.